Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is another episode of my series called Make It a Chord Melody. And in this lesson, we are going to be talking about how to improvise chord melodies in a jazz context. So we're improvising jazz chord melodies, which means that we are playing melodies, but we're supporting every instance of the melody with a chord shape. I gotta jump in here for a second. The outline you're seeing on the screen right now is the outline of this little mini series within the Make It a Chord Melody series. This was gonna be one big lesson, but I broke it up into four lessons. So the video you're watching right now is dominant seven. We're doing chord melodies with the dominant seven chord. And then the next video will be major seven and the following video will be putting it together into progressions. That's all, just wanted to put it into context for you. Let's move on with dominant seven. Let's move on to the next chord type, dominant seven. We're gonna do exactly the same steps. Let's fly through them. Chord tones along the top string. This is root of G seven. Flat seven, root, three, five, flat seven, root. Just make sure you can see those go up and down. We'll fly through the steps a little faster. You get the point, spend time with it uh, for yourself. Let's do the inversions of G7. Here's an inversion, root on top inversion, third on top inversion, fifth on top inversion, flat seven on top inversion, back to that root on top. Go back down them. Okay, next step is to alter those if you want to at all for either the sound or the ease of playing. I'm going to take this one and change it to this because I just like the sound of it. Um, I'm going to take this one and change it to this. Now that is replacing the root with the nine makes it sound a little more colorful to me. And then I'm gonna replace this with this, which also replaces the root with the nine. Okay, so now. Really nice, kind of different, more extended sound than those typical chords, and none of it is better or worse than anything else. You find what you want and what you can play easier. Now you just drill those which that just kind of goes without saying, drill them up and down until you can play them back and forth. And then after that, we are going to map out the scale notes around them. And so this is many steps. This is step five at this point. And in the last chord, um, we jumped right into adding the scale notes around the chords, but a, a step five can be uh, mapping out the scale itself first. So root, flat seven, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, root. And then after that, um, adding the chord tones around it, whatever you need to do, take your time to do it. So now let's take those chord shapes and play the scales around them. This is the root on top. This is two on top. Here's the three on top. Here's the four on top. I like that is now it made it a dominant seven sus four. Okay, here's the five on top. Here's the six on top. My favorite chord shape. <laughs> I'll say that about a bunch of, the, the chord I'm playing is always my favorite chord shape. Um, flat seven on top. Okay, root on top. Flat seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Flat seven, back to one. So we're mapping out the scale and you can take your time with that and just use the diagrams that I have for you on the screen. Of course, drill that is a step. And if we are following our steps, drilling it is step seven. Step eight would be improvise with it a little bit. And really keep your improvisations very simple. Right, I'm kind of phrasing whatever I play, just kind of trying to st sit with that for a minute. Just what can you do with two, three notes and, and you know, these notes and play those chords around them, that counts, right? You're playing a melody, you're improvising it, okay? And then step nine, we did this last time. You don't have to remember the numbers of the steps, whatever, There's you, you, can, you can go through this uh, more intuitively than I've mapped it out, but I like to delineate these things. Um, 
let's try it in the context of a song. So even just with dominant seven, if you if you just mapped out dominant seven on a blues where you're hanging out on a dominant seventh chord for a long time in a jazz context, which is very common, you can start to play a couple of these little things. And even if you don't map out all of that, you can try to have even, what if you just try to have the one, two, three, and now I've switched it to the context of C7, root on top, two on top, three on top. Right? Even if you just have that and you throw it in the mix in a moment that works, uh, very cool, making your playing, kind of adding a dimension to your playing. So let's play with this for a sec. And we don't have to I don't want to overwhelm you with changing chords just yet, but I was right here and I wanted to go into the same shape. I mean, all the shapes are the same, right? F7 with the root and then the two and then the three and then the four. And then, so if you do this on a few chords, then you can start to um, see that clearly. I'll start here to show that happening. Now F7. So the point wasn't to show you the chord changes, actually. I just wanted to say if you're on C7 or any you know, dominant seventh chord for four measures, you have an opportunity. But since that's all dominant seventh chords, we had mapped those out. If you can move them where the root is and keep the shapes all the same, then you are playing uh, improvising chord melodies over a blues a simple blues like this, which is just three different dominant seventh chords. If you want some chord melody arrangements to study closely, there's tabs and notation. Get my solo guitar arrangement pack. There's solo guitar arrangements, but also specifically some chord melody arrangements and some stuff in between. So you can check it out in detail where I use these exact voicings on several tunes like Fly Me to the Moon and Black Orpheus. And you can see, oh yeah, that that's the arrangement and the language unfolding. And you can see it on paper. If you want to get that, there's a link in the description to grab it totally for free. Or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to download it there. My video next week will go through the chord melody process with the major seven chord and make sure you check out the whole series. There's a link I'll put it on the screen here and in the description. So you're going to have minor seven, dominant seven from this video next week, major seven. Then we'll go through two, five, one chord progressions with the chord melody vocabulary. Hope to see you on those future lessons. Thanks for watching. Take care. Happy practicing.